Hi everybody, it's Helium Lemon 15. I'm gonna try to be a little bit quiet this episode just because it's midnight and you know I have neighbors and everything. But uh, yeah, I apologize in advance for that intro. It's it's I don't know. I just thought it was hilarious today. Uh, I was on Twitter. Um, images with Yume Miki music, and so I stole it from that. Um, I. I apologize to any senior citizens who are watching the video. I just think it's like kind of a, such a. It just it. I don't know. It has that different energy that I just love, and I know that's not a good excuse for it. Anyway, here we are back in Iceberg. Iceberg is so pretty. Look at these pretty backgrounds and and stuff. I don't know. I just I love the art direction on it, and I just love snow levels in general. Uh, anyway, here's this level where we have to outrun a big avalanche and um, immediately I got flashbacks to this um, Steam game uh, that I played like some years ago when I was just starting college called uh, Nihil Lumbra and it was a nice idea but kind of an underwhelming game but it had like all these different sections where you had to outrun this, like, void, this big, like, wall of thing, and you just had to outrun it, and it was like an auto-scroller, and it was like, oh boy, I have to outrun the big thing, and it's an auto-scroller, and it's so interesting, and anyway. Yeah, here's this, uh, Metroid level, you remember that? It's a level with Metroids in it. It's a, a cross-series collaboration, I don't know, well, anyway. I mean, Nintendo has done that. Nintendo has done plenty of uh, games which reference. Also, you notice that um, Ice uh, and Pitch, uh, Kirby is ac actually cranking him like a machine. So it's like an ice machine, so I think that's cute. I probably haven't shown off nearly enough of the power-ups in this game, but that's just an incentive for you to go and play this game. Um, I was kind of worried at this point, but like Metroid sucking you doesn't actually take off any health, so... So basically you just have to freeze these Metroids and... Chuck them into the lava. I guess that's the only way to like destroy them. Which I guess could be a reference to like the original Metroid where you had to use like the ice beam on, on stuff. I am actually playing through Metroid Prime 2 at the moment. Um, I just got the power bombs, and so I'm, g I'm going through, like, Sanctuary Fortress and that stuff, and... I remember the game from watching Nintendo Capri Sun play it, but, like, I don't remember it that well, so... I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I do re I see stuff and I remember it, I'm like, oh, this was that, you know, Spider-Ball boss, or, or, or that other boss. I didn't remember Dark Samus at all, but whatever. Anyway. Metroid, the Metroid Prime games are, are stressful. But, uh... They do have some pretty dope exploration involved. Um, although sometimes I do wish the game was a bit more... Uh, actually, yeah. It has this whole thing where it's like, you want me to go back to a previous area? Why? Like, how how am I supposed to know that? Or it's like, yeah, like I get an item and it's like, oh wow, I bet things are gonna be so open and, and they're kind of open, but not in, enough to be like, oh wow, I could open two more doors and now I'm just as stuck as I was before. So, <laughs> yeah. And again, two two in the same level. They really liked this idea of of the avalanche chasing you. Oh my goodness! It's Hogan's Heroes. We gotta cause an avalanche. Never mind. Not, no, no Hogan's Heroes. Not today. It's weird that a, a icy mountain would have a volcano under it. But I guess that's. Oh, this is clutch. I couldn't see where I was on the screen because the avalanche was covering it up. So here's Samus. Um, looking nice with blonde hair. If you actually don't, um, if you fail the mission, um, Samus will still have her helmet on. But she takes it off. You don't get to see her in a bikini. Uh -huh. 
Do you really want to see her in a bikini in a kid's game? Whatever. Kids game is is debatable. Like, I don't know. Like this game has disturbing elements, like oh by the way, I know we just passed it already, but I love these penguins with the, the wool caps. The Mike Nesmith caps. Also, this background is gorgeous. Look at those mountains. It's like the Himalayas or something. Kirby goes to Tibet. Or or G Greenland, yeah. So I love uh, Nago, I love the platforming, but um, eh, this level is not the right level for it. Here we are going for Na Nago again. Like, I believe we can do it, and like, here we go, we're gonna go for the platforming again, and... Oh, you'll notice the music in this level is the same as the pyramid. Um, from the desert level, you know, the, the pyramid with the really long item quest. Um, so it's nice that they're bringing that song back for a second and final time. There I was just ducking to try and avoid the enemies, but then I was like, oh right, it's a platform where you duck and if you duck you pass through the platform. Also look at this. Hiding platforms behind another texture to make it even harder to see. It's like, that's just kind of artificial game design. It's like, oh... Like, oh, it'll be harder because you can't see the platform. It's like, I don't know. Maybe they didn't mean that, but I feel like it is a bit harder because, like, the platforms are so hard to see. Oh, and this bit screams auto-scroller. So I was like, huh, but it's not an auto scroller, that's funny. This bit screams Kirby's Dreamland 2. Like, overly brutal auto scroller. Oh, and here's where I re realized, oh, it is an auto scroller, and it gets me. Frickin' auto scroll, cheap death, frickin' Yume Niki, frickin'. Oh, yeah, I started playing off. In fact,. I made it, like, to the final boss, but then I was like, okay, I want to, like, have my eyes ki kind of virgin for my Let's Play of it, and so, I mean, I've pl I played through the whole game already, so it's like, I will at least have something to say, like, you know, oh, this, I love this part, this, I really thought this part was interesting the first time I... I played through it. You know, it's like, ugh, I haven't done a blind playthrough since like frickin' I Spy Spooky Mansion. Which, I don't know. I'd still like to do blind LPs. Anyway, Off, Off is a frickin' masterpiece. I love Off so much. It has such a cool art style, it has such a weird intellectual sense of humor, which is totally up my alley. It's it's very surreal, but it has this dark tone where it's just like about all these miserable people who are being oppressed in this fantasy world of, of rivers of meat and talking cats and Sperm whales? <laughs> it's a very strange game. Don't expect me to explain it or for it to make sense when I try to explain it. But, um, yeah. Off. There you go. Yeah, but... Again, Nitro Rad's influence on me. Like, watching his LPs... Uh, or, not LPs, reviews of stuff makes me want to play the darn games on my own. So, like, that's kind of dangerous, because now I just feel like buying a bunch of games, or like buying a controller so that I can play more games on Steam, I don't know. Or even, like, I don't know, my my friend offered a while ago to, hey, like, hey, you want, you want to play some of my GameCube games? Because you already have a Wii, and you've never played Mario Sunshine before, and I must say I'm pretty tempted by that offer right now, but it, it would be for, like, for my channel, so that I could show it off for my channel, so I don't know. I mean, not that I wouldn't play Mario Sunshine for fun. Anyway, here's a mini game that's interesting. Well, that's easy. 
I like how the music gets quieter for the minigame. Um, it's a nice touch. And then it gets louder again, but, um... Yeah, final round was pretty easy, too. That was pleasantly easy. A pleasant surprise that I got through that minigame on the first try. Unlike the 19 tries of the... Let's, let's hope the Cloudy Park one doesn't give me... I mean... It's the same thing as, like, the Sand Canyon minigame where you just have to, like, look at something and count it really quickly. But it's like... No, like, can't you come up with something better than that instead of recycling the same thing twice? I mean, I don't know. But back to Nitro Rat, I've been watching his, like, Mario series. So he did, like, Mario 64, Mario DS, all 3D games, basically. Um, did I say Mario 64 DS? Yeah. Um, Luigi's Mansion, of course. Uh... Sunshine, Odyssey, 3D World, 3D Land, Galaxy, Galaxy 2. And I still don't have a Switch, but like, I'm seriously wondering if I should like buy something. Like, if I should buy Galaxy 2, because I only ever had Galaxy 1. If I should buy 3D World, or at least Captain Toad Treasure Track Tracker. Now hear me out, I would actually have a lot of fun like doing an LP of something like Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. So, and like, hey, are a lot of people doing that right now? And it's like, well, my job is to do like weirder games, like games that nobody's heard of. And it's like, yeah, but it's like, I could also bring like a very fresh perspective to something like, you know, I don't know. I also just feel bad for the Wii U because like, I'm the only person that I know who has Breath of the Wild on the Wii U, and thinks of it as a Wii U game that also came out on Switch, as opposed to a Switch game that also came out on Wii U. And I just feel like Nintendo abandons their good ideas too early. Like, Wii Virtual Console, and I mean they kept it for Wii U Virtual Console, so that's pretty dope. Um, but like Wii U, they were like, oh, this isn't selling quick, do something else. I mean, Wii U had great graphics and a great controller. And like, the Switch doesn't do anything that different, except it's portable, but it's like, why, what makes the Switch so different that like, we can't have Mario Odyssey on the Wii U? Like, no other that I know of. I mean, I don't really follow the other major game companies because I don't care as much, but like... Nintendo went from Wii U to the Switch in what felt like... What felt like four years to me, but it was really like eight. I guess. No. No, it was like four, wasn't it? Wii U is 20, like, 13 or something, and Switch was 2017 or something, so yeah. Like, what other game company was, like, had a great console, and then four years later had to be like, oh, screw that, like, here's a new one, ha, uh, JK, just forget the last one. I, I like these penguins. I really hated having to kill them, um, but it was like, well... Q's so slow and I just wanted to make sure I got through this level without a scratch because I need the fire ability. So, too bad. It reminds me there's this level in Space Station Silicon Valley. Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's Snow Joke, where the level begins with a big snowball rolling over a penguin, and so then the penguin's dead, so then you can use it. If you don't know, Space Station in Silicon Valley is is a game where you are a robot and you use animals, but like, you play as, you take over different animals, but like, they have to be dead first. It's a very silly game. Uh, what's in here? 
Seriously. Oh, okay, it's if you lose the fire power up and, and you need it. It's like, okay, there it is. So this level has an interesting design. Um, it's kind of fun to plow through it with Ku and fire. Um, there's certainly not a lot of enemies to like have to dodge, which is good because I still don't like playing as Ku, but like we got one or two more levels where we have to play as Ku, so... Oh well. Um, but uh... Yeah, it's interesting because, as you'll see soon, we'll be switching between different partners. And normally you'll only see your partners in like a little side room. But here, this is like a long connected room. And yet, here's Choo Choo, just waiting for us. Also, like, you know, this game is pretty amazing for the amount of, like, facial expression that it has. Like, for a platformer, you know. So, like, all the characters look pissed off when you don't pick them, when then they're really excited when you do pick them, and then there's, like, there's Choo Choo looking sad, and Pitch looking very angry, just, like, squawking at you. The little, the little wink that Choo Choo does to the camera. Anyway, I know that's like, I'm waiting until the end of the game to talk about something ex painfully obvious, but yeah. Here we go. So yeah, I was scared that that was like not gonna be a thing, but like, it's nice. It's a nice design. So that was like a, a rainbow weird thing. No, it's supposed to be a snail shell. Spoiler. I like this, uh ice cream scooper mini boss he's great also the the arena feels really cool like that you know sort of playful like weird colors sort of thing i don't know how to describe it that like sort of preschool playroom sort of feeling it reminds me very much of kirby's adventure which is like I think probably my favorite Kirby game, um, because one, it was my first Kirby, okay, I thought I was gonna have two points, but I have three. One, it was my first Kirby game. Two, like, for a NES game, like, the aesthetics and the visuals are just perfect. Like, seriously, and three, the con controls are smooth as butter, so I always love that about that. This game, like, is kind of like the modern Kirby formula of, like, you walk and you're slow as molasses, and then you have to double tap in order to do a dash, and I kind of hate that. I don't know. Also, that was really scary, but, like, we made it in. And hurrah. Got him. Again, with the frame-perfect door entry. I think it, you, it's frame-perfect if you don't hear a sound. Anyway, stay tuned for the next level. Yeah, whatever. Bye.